हेलो एंड वेलकम टू न्यूज वॉरियर योर ओन यूट्यूब चैनल फॉर भारत शक्ति डॉट इन आई एम नितिन गोखले एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट अ बिट ऑफ हिस्ट्री एंड स्पेशली रीसेंट हिस्ट्री ऑफ द इंडियन आर्मी एंड इट्स कॉल्ड ऑपरेशन मेघ दूत दैट बिगैन ऑन थर्टीन अप्रिल एंड वॉट बेटर वे देन नाउ to have someone who actually began indian army's deployment on the siachen glacier on 13th april 1984 lieutenant general sanjay kulkarni then captain sanjay kulkarni now of course a retired veteran of the indian army was the first man to lead a platoon of indian army onto a pass called bela fonda let's hear from him what exactly happened on that particular day which was a stormy snowy day Uh, on that height of about 22000 feet nil kulkarni welcome and thank you very much for your time thank you tell us what exactly happened on 13th april 1984 we lost operation meghdoot on the 13th of april 1984 a little i would say on the 12th of april in the evening at around between 5 and 6 we had this imported clothing come to us and we were all to be equipped with it for the morning of the 13th and uh, around 5 5:30 all these cheetah helicopters were landed at the base camp and we found ourselves uh, ready to be inducted we were to be two in every helicopter that was to be uh, flown towards sachin and in the first two flights we were four of us and uh, uh, my radio operator with me and two more boys who were part of my mission earlier in 1983 as part of polar bear 1 and 2 now we knew exactly where bela fonda was we knew the terrain uh, very well but as soon as uh, uh, the helicopter pilot said uh, that we would not be able to land on top of bela fonda so you will have to jump from the helicopter I said, uh, jump is not a problem, but uh, let's make sure how the surface is. If it is hard, good enough. But if it is soft, then I might well as be prepared for it. But how to know whether it's hard or soft? So we had an atta bori with me in the <laughs> chopper, and we said we'll push this uh, out and see how uh, hard it lands or how, how firm it is. The yeah. snow. Mm. So it turned out to be reasonably hard, and we jumped. Having jumped, the four of us from the helicopters we decided that now we must make a immediate uh, temporary helipad so the remainder of the chopper none of them need to jump now they can all land because it was hard snow so that is how on the 30th of april uh, short of bela fonda about 2 uh, to 3 km short of bela fonda uh, we were all uh, initially we jump and subsequently all of us were heli landed on uh, top there so how many of you were we were about 30 of us 30 and uh, major sandhu was the uh, company commander mm-hmm. i was the platoon commander with the total 30 including him and me and uh, within about i would say an hour or so the first the operator who was with me suffered hypo that they high altitude pulmonary edema mm-hmm. and uh, since he suffered from that he had to be evacuated mm-hmm. now i had only one uh, radio operator with me who had trained long he knew exactly what it is all about but as uh, he had to go back as luck would have it uh, he had to go back he was flown out mm-hmm. and uh, subsequently uh, after having uh, occupied bela fonda the same choppers were utilized were to be utilized for occupation of siana but by about 10:30 the weather turned extremely bad blizzards very poor visibility and therefore siala was called off this so operations for siala called off which was to be led by major bahugana and uh, we were all by then had landed at bela fonda and you have to hold bela fonda and you are in the middle of a snowstorm absolutely in a thick blizzardous weather for for the next 3 days oh terrible you are absolutely <laughs> right uh, you rightly brought it out because uh, it is all there in the book of your nj beyond nj 9842 so it was very very bad So and for the next three days we were to be there, and we were passed very clear orders that do not open the radio sets. Do not open the radio sets because as soon as the radio sets are open, then everybody around would get to know that you are you are in on Siachen and close to Bela Fonda. So we kept that in mind. But as luck would have it, on the seventeenth of April, 
uh, if I recollect it rightly, Ramesh, who was uh, who had been with me earlier in Polar Bear One and Two, mm -hmm. he passed the day, and since he uh, sort of passed away in the ten, and each of these little pop tens, we have got three to four living in one. So, so he was the first casualty actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, casualty uh, mm -hmm. uh, on top of Siachen. Mm -hmm. So we had we were thinking now what to do. Orders were not to open the radio set. And now we, we have a casualty uh, with us who is no more. Uh, at least Mandal, who was the radio operator, since he suffered from HAPO, right. and he could very be first car, he could be evacuated. Yeah. Now, perforce, we had to open the radio set to inform that chopper is required to evacuate Ramesh. Now, as soon as you open the radio sets mm -hmm. to inform of this thing, within no time, we had the enemy chopper right in front of us on top of Bela Fondler. Hovering so, over Bela Fondler. Hovering Fondler. over Bela Fondler. So they had spotted us. Mm -hmm. We had spotted them. Mm -hmm. Now the race for Bela Fondler had begun. Yeah. Now who would be the yes, Now if you recollect, uh, Musharraf in his book, in the line of fire, yeah. has mentioned that uh, the Indian army preempted us. Uh, preempted You outraced them. Uh, you outraced uh, absolutely, Musharraf. Absolutely. <laughs> and since mm. it was preempted, yeah. it was indicated that they were also planning to occupy. Yeah. Now, if they were planning, we were told later, and he has also mentioned in his book, that they also wanted it to be done somewhere around later part of March, or you could say in the first few of April. But their core commander, knowing the bad conditions uh, as they prevailed over there, said it would be okay if they occupied Siachen on the 1st of May. Because the years previous to it, every time we would venture into Siachen around July, August, September. Because the then, snow used to be very yeah, heavy. Yeah, absolutely heavy yeah. snow. It's a 76 kilometer long glacier, about, you know, between 3 and the 10 odd kilometers, 7 odd kilometers wide uh, right. glacier. It's so very difficult uh, venturing there. So, their core commander prevailed. But here, our army commander, the core commander, the sector commander decided that it would be on the 13th of April. Some of them told uh, Brigadier Channa, who was the sector commander, that, well, why 13th? Mm -hmm. It's unlucky. Mm -hmm. Well, it was unlucky for Pakistan, mm -hmm. but very lucky for us, which was Baisakhi, mm -hmm. and uh, we all decided. And despite uh, the casualties and despite what it is, you would be surprised that in about less than about a fortnight, we had almost had 21 from the first 30 lot that had landed on Siachen had suffered from frostbite. That's still blades. Because you didn't have so many of the equipment uh, which was Even there. Even though the equipment with yeah. General Hoon yeah. had got it from abroad right. and for which also the Pakistanis had probably picked up everything that was available in the international market. Yes. But notwithstanding that, it did manage to bring sure. and it was that which was the saving grace. Because uh, the down is fantastic. Yes. Uh, because the temperatures have turned minus 30, minus 35, probably maybe more also for one didn't know it. Weather was extremely bad. And uh, but as uh, luck would have it, we raced for Bella Fondler, and by the time Pakis realized the mistake, that uh, well, first May was uh, too, late, too late, and the Indians had preempted and had occupied Siachen on the 13th, and had occupied Bella Fondler. Yeah. Now it was impossible, impossible for, for them, them to come, to have this despite problem. all the attempts. So these 34 years has shown us that uh, the uh, decision to occupy Bella Fondler and then subsequently Siala has uh, paid off and we continue to be there. Indian Army is in a dominating position. We are celebrating 34th anniversary of Operation Meghdood as we speak. And um, as I see it, uh, it was your leadership and your, uh, you know, the initiative that your commanders took to send you there has uh, made sure that India is now uh, in full control of Siachen. Well, I would put it uh, this way with anybody would have done it. So when you look back, and of course you rose through the ranks, uh, became a three-star general, uh, you first got posted there again in uh, 14 Corps as Chief of Staff. Why do you think, and uh, this question always gets asked, why is, why is Siachen important for India? You know, what happens is, if you take back your mind to 63, when Shakskam was ceded to China, and even in your book, Beyond NJ9842, even after the Karachi Agreement of 49, it said line then northwards. Now when you say line joining northwards, it actually means in the general area of K2, along the ridge line of Salpur and it goes to K2. That's the second highest peak in the world, Karakoram 2. What the Pakistanis have done, it was a cartographic aggression. 
as a result of it, they joined straight from there to Karakaram Pass. Pass. Now they were that thing dirty. Now north was to them sitting there. It meant joining the Karakaram Pass, but actually it means it's the K2. Now when you involve Karakaram Pass, Karakaram Pass is only distinctly to only two countries, India and China. That's Now Pakistan is also intended playing a role yeah. in that uh, area. Now and over a period of time, they realized that. Since it was almost like a no man's land, and not many people had ventured it, Pakistanis had sponsored some foreign expeditions mm. to these beautiful peaks that are there, and that uh, Karakaram ranges, the Ladakh ranges, the entire of Siachen Glacier itself, which is the world's second longest glacier, 76 kilometer long. So all the, uh, since it's a beautiful area, now you realize it that from there, once you occupy the Salt Tor Ridge, you dominate Pakistan. Sure. Yeah, there's no way that the Pakistan. Now you rightly said is the 34th year. For 34 years, Pakistanis have been attempting and trying the level best to get a foothold on Salto Road. Salt Forget the Siachen Glacier. They can't Siachen even see Siachen. Far from. They can't even see Siachen. They, they can't even get to Siachen. Yeah. To, to get a foothold yeah. on Salto Road in itself is difficult. Mm. So we are dominating Pakistan. Mm. That is the first thing. Yeah. And secondly, you block all routes of infiltration. Mm. Because you walk, occupy the passes. So yeah. you have the Gyongla to yourself, you have the Balafonla to yourself, you have the Siala to yourself, and all the other small routes of ingresses. So therefore, you have almost blocked his entry into Ladakh. Right. There is no way yes. that uh, Pakistan can get. The military adventurism, mm. which could be attempted by them either from Turtuk side or from uh, Ladakh side, uh, from uh, your Siachen side onto Ladakh, mm. totally blocked. There is no way now he can, you know, Siachen is like a wedge between Pakistan and China. China. And 76 kilometer long wedge which is uh, gone in, it's very difficult for them to do it. So you have prevented the handshake between China and Pakistan? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Now we talk of the Karakaram Highway. So there is this Kunjara Pass which is very far from there. Yes. From there they now they have to yes. make this the, uh, the initiative, Sakshan. the border road initiative of theirs. The CPEC is all coming from Kunjara, Kunjara. Pass from coming down to Bada. Yeah. Now you realize that we have made it very difficult for Pakistan, as you rightly said, shake hands with China, mm -hmm. which they would like to. Mm -hmm. And in this context, even though initially I would say it turned out to be a very expensive venture because, uh, you know, but now spending three to five crores even per day, it's absolutely peanuts because you have now a strategic advantage right. and uh, everybody in India. The Indian Army, per se, I would say, takes pride. If you ask a soldier if he served in Siachen, oh, that's something it, with pride he'll tell you. That's, yes, I have served in Siachen. That's a badge of honor. Absolutely, badge of honor for them. Mm -hmm. It's something like counter insurgency, a yes. badge of honor. Mm -hmm. uh, the infantry boys mm -hmm. and Siachen servant, uh, fantastic, unbelievable. So if uh, you ask a veteran, a retired soldier, mm -hmm. he will only have memories of Siachen or he will have memories of counter insurgency. Okay, so that's one. So way, I it's a big strategic step that was taken that time and uh, I think uh, our countrymen should know more about it as we have discussed. I think uh, more and more people should look at Siachen as something that India should take pride Absolutely. in Absolutely. and uh, something that uh, we, uh, the Indian army is proud about and the nation should be proud about. There is no denying the fact and uh, let me tell you the uh, physical fitness is something that can be tested over there and I have always been saying uh, you know pet me roti. Mm -hmm. Hat me so soti or chal choti. All that is basics which are required exactly. to live, survive, and be able to withstand sub zero temperatures, blizzardous weather. The camaraderie that uh, develops the there yeah. is amazing, amazing. The porters. Uh, that are there from Ladakh region, the way they have taken on to the troops, the way the troops have taken on uh, to them is something uh, worth seeing whether when we get stuck in a crevice or you know we are uh, stuck in a snowstorm, you find all of them uh, helping each other. Absolutely. Dr. Kulkarni, thank you very much for your time and giving us a glimpse into what you did uh, and how you began Operation Thank Lake. you very much. Thank you. Pleasure.